I'm very excited about the results that we got here because you know, this was, over 90 days we were able to get 68 guns off the street. We've made 53 uh, arrests, and those people are charged and facing serious time in either federal prison or state prison. You know, they were bringing into White Center something that this community doesn't deserve, and that is violence drugs and guns, and we were able to get that off the street. Now, nobody thinks that we can come in here once, do this once, and that everything's taken care of, but I think it's it's been encouraging to law enforcement that we've been able to do this, get this success, and we'll be back. And it's also going to be followed with the uh, introduction of the sheriff's storefront, more of a presence on 16th Avenue where some of these problems were, uh, and, and I think an ongoing commitment to the community to help the community regain their streets and feel safer. Yeah, next question. What what can people on the ground, people who live and work here, what can they do, uh, perhaps organically, looking five and ten and twenty years into the future? Well, it, this may be a philosophical question, but what what might people do? Well, you know, we're, and we're going to start that discussion Monday evening at seven o'clock. We have a community meeting up at the Greenbridge Center. We're going to have local elected officials, and we're going to talk about what we did in this event, but also how do you sustain this momentum, and how do you make this an unfriendly community for people who want to sell drugs, people who are gang members and want to and have sell guns, and you know, it is going to be a combined effort, but it, more visible police presence and more empowerment of the community to feel like they can pick up the phone and call 911, and that something will happen when they do. Yeah, and we know now that there are about 10,000 gang members in South King County. Can, can we positively count uh, count on the possibility that 20, 25 years from now that number would be cut in half or even less than half? Well, you know, the, the gang proliferation is really, it's more than just a law enforcement issue, it's a, it's a community-wide issue and people join gangs for all sorts of different reasons and so you really, we're talking about dealing with people who are with kids who are very young uh, before they get involved and before it becomes fashionable for them to be in a gang. So, you know, the law enforcement can only do this much and the community's got to do the rest to make to give kids a, an opportunity other than joining the gang. Uh, they give them some hope for the future. Give them a stake in the community. It, it does make it tough when some of the parents are in the gang too, we, and, we, as we're finding out. We do have multi generational gangs, and you know there it, it is. It's a tough situation. It's hard to break that cycle. But we, there's certainly enough that we can focus on. We're not going to keep all the kids from joining gangs, but if we can keep enough, and we can give them a stake in the community, something you know, something to lose. If they got nothing to lose, they might as well join a gang. But if they have aspirations that someday they want to go to college, or they want to open a business, or they have things that they want to do in the future, and that the gang gets in the way of that, then we've succeeded. So it's all about giving the kids some hope.